untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today I'm taking a look at a mono rat aggro deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, built around Chandra, a dress to kill. The 3 mana Planeswalker from Crimson Vow starts out at 3 loyalty, and her first plus 1 ability will add a red mana to her mana pool, and then she deals 1 damage to up to 1 target player or Planeswalker. Then her second plus one ability exiles the top card of our library. If that card is red, we can cast it this turn, potentially providing a nice bit of card advantage. And then the minus seven ultimate, which is not impossible to get to, will often be game winning by exiling the top five cards of our library. We can cast red spells from among them this turn, and we also get an emblem saying whenever we cast a red spell, the emblem deals X damage to any target, where X is the amount of mana spent to cast that spell. So Chandra is going to be at her best in a low curve aggressive deck, where we can often still cast a one drop after using the mana ability the turn we play Chandra. And of course in a very low curve aggressive deck, we're going to have a lower land count, meaning more red spells to potentially hit with the second plus one ability to provide more card advantage. And in a low curve deck we don't have to worry about not being able to cast the spell we exile. And in a deck with only 20 lands and a whopping 32 one drops, Chandra is sure to reach her full potential. So let's take a look at those one drops, starting out with our creatures. And the first creature I want to highlight is Wayward Guide Beast, a creature that was made fun of when it was first revealed, a 2 2 with a trample and haste. And when the Guide Beast deals combat damage to a player, we have to return a land we control to its owner's hand. So you can kind of see the drawback there. But the Guide Beast actually shines in a low curve aggressive deck that has a lot of one drops, because sometimes you're stuck on two lands, for instance, and then the Guide Beast can actually generate additional mana if you didn't have a land to play for the turn, because you can potentially use that two mana in your main phase to cast additional one drops, attack with a guide beast, pick up a land, replay it, and then still use one extra mana to potentially cast another one drop. So that's where the guide beast shines, and it's also a nice way to re-enable landfall alongside the Akum Hellhound, a one mana O2 with a landfall giving it plus two plus two until end of turn whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control. So thanks to the Guide Beast, we'll always have lands to replay to trigger landfall for the Hellhound, and then a nice two-powered one-drop that can start putting in some damage. Then we also have the Falconrath Pitfighter, a 2-1, that has an ability for one and a red, allowing us to discard a card and sacrifice a vampire to draw two cards, but we can only activate that ability if an opponent lost life this turn. Then we also have the full playset of Hall Monitor, a 1-1 one, one with haste, and has an activated ability for one in red, we can tap it, and then target creature cannot block this turn, so we can potentially burn the smaller creatures and then use Hall Monitor to get past larger creatures that we cannot kill. And then a Kassik Wolf Rider, another new addition from Crimson Vow, is also quite good. A 1-2 with Menace, and has an activated ability for 2 in a red, we can tap it and exile 3 cards from our graveyard to create a 3-2 Red Wolf creature token. So it can get in some early damage, thanks to Menace, and then a good mana sink in the late game, especially in a deck that has a lot of cheap spells that will end up in the graveyard. And then taking a look at our non-creature spells, we have four copies of Play With Fire as a cheap burn spell, dealing two damage to any target, and if we target a player we can also scry one. And then Frostbite is the reason we're playing 20 snow-covered mountains, to deal two damage to a creature or planeswalker unless we control three or more snow permanents, in which case we deal three damage instead. And then we've got a full play set of Ancestral Anger as a nice sorcery speed pump spell from Crimson Vow, giving target creature Trample and plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is 1 plus the number of cards named Ancestral Anger in our graveyard, and we also get to draw a card. So if we're exiling cards from our graveyard with Kassig Wolf Rider, of course we're going to try and keep the Ancestral Anger in there for as long as possible. And between Chandra revealing extra cards with the second plus one ability, as well as Reckless Impulse, which is next, we have a lot of ways to find additional copies of Ancestral Anger, so it starts dealing quite a bit of extra damage. And then Reckless Impulse is the final card in our deck, a two mana sorcery that exiles the top two cards of our library, and until the end of our next turn we can play those cards. And in a deck with such a low curve, we'll almost always be able to use all the cards that we exile with Reckless Impulse, turning it into a two mana draw two, which of course is incredibly powerful. So the play pattern with this deck is pretty simple, try and play as many cheap cards as possible to apply pressure early, hopefully we've got a Chandra, in which case we might not be attacking with a Wayward Guide Beast early, since we want to make sure to hit that third land drop first, 
Then we can use Chandra, maybe use her first plus one to add red mana, play another one drop, and then we can slowly start leveraging the card advantage that the second plus one provides. And by the time our opponent plays a creature that's large enough to survive our burn spells, we can maybe still get past it with Hall Monitor or the Menace on Wolf Rider, or we can just go wide enough to still kill them. And if they have to spend resources attacking Chandra, then we open up a new attack with our smaller creatures to still get in for damage. And if they have a board wipe to deal with our creatures, then Chandra can still pressure them, so that puts them between a rock and a hard place. Now of course we don't have room for any creature land since we're rarely gonna get above 3 lands in play, so no point in having a faceless haven in there that doesn't cast our 1 drops, or a card like Den of the Bugbear which we're probably never gonna activate. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, only have a 1 lander, but I think we can still keep. As soon as we find land 2 we get access to impulse, we've got anger as a cantrip. And we can start out with a pit fighter. Let's see what we're up against. A red white picked up a second land. So probably just gonna double one drop creature for now. And I like Hall Monitor plus Wolf Rider. Don't wanna anger into a potential one mana burn spell. So good early board presence on the play with impulse to refuel opponent's blue reds. So if they had a cinder classum, they probably would have been keeping that up instead. So I'm not too worried about a potential cinder classum, even though I guess they could have kept it to also kill Wolf Rider. For now, it seems like a great spot for guide beasts. And then I can ancestral anger pick up a land and still play Wolf Rider as well. And then hope there's no kicked cinder class in our future. And then next turn most likely would impulse first to try and hit a land and then play anger. It's gonna be an expressive iteration. Now these Jeskai control extra turn decks often splash white for Sunset Revelry, so that would be an incredibly effective card for the opponent right now. But doesn't look like they're gonna have it this turn. So, let me just figure out that we don't have lethal here, but let's see, 5, 6, 7, this would have been 8, 9, so 1 point off lethal. But uh, yeah, we'll never know what uh, the impulse would have found onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand is promising. Impulse can help find land number 3 for Chandra could use an extra early creature maybe to apply pressure with opponents on a white deck. All right, so we'll impulse here and then hopefully at least hit one land, which we did. So bits flooded on Chandras. We'll see if that turns out to be a good thing. But next turn we can play both exiled cards as our opponent foretells the card, so might be more of a control deck than a white aggro deck. So they could easily have a Doomscar in exile, which makes me less inclined to want to play another Hellhound. Although on the other hand, we also don't have a land to pump it anyway, so it's probably not too bad here if it dies. Right, it's going to be a Lunark Veteran instead. We did find a land. So let's use the card advantage ability here. Come on, Chandra. Think of something good. All right, Pit Fighter's nice. So opponent could still have a Doom's card in exile. Not sure what other card would make sense for them. Maybe like Starnheim Unleashed if they're playing an Angel's deck. So the question is whether or not to kill a Lunark Veteran to get in some more damage and whether to commit the Pit Fighter to the board. Could also play the Pit Fighter and then use the Sacrifice ability, I kind of like that idea. That way we kind of hedge our bets against a potential Sweeper. And then I can discard one of my additional Chandras 
to draw two, maybe find more lands to enable landfall. All right, so we'll see what happens. There's a Doomscar. All right, so far so good, I guess. And a Wayward Guide Beast would have been great with Hellhound. For now, do I need the extra mana? Doesn't seem like it, so we'll use the second mode. Just to land. And then Guide Beast into Ancestral Anger is going to be step one. If we can keep up Frostbite to kill Faceless Haven, that's also a plus. And we're just going to rumble in for six. And then we're totally fine picking up some lanes here. We hadn't played a land yet, so I can play Pit Fighter, keep up Frostbite for that Faceless Haven if they want to pressure Chandra, which is pretty close to ultimate. Cosmos Elixir, that's fine. So opponent's going to gain two. And we have Lethal with the backup Chandra dealing one damage to their face. As we can go deal one to your face. Play backup Chandra. Sadly, I have to give up on the ultimate here, but that's fine. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. I think we've got a keeper. Probably going to lead with Hellhounds as we're up against a mono white aggro deck. So Wolf Rider could block the initiates, but I want to play Hellhounds while I still have lands to play. If that makes sense. Could even attack past uh, Thalia, thanks to the third point of toughness. It's gonna be a Luminar Kangsprint, so powerful start from the white deck. And we don't have any burn spells, which is really what we need in this matchup early on. So can play a land, no sense in playing Hall Monitor now. So we'll attack and then I guess Pit Fighter plus Wolf Rider is fine. And then our Chandra will be under quite a bit of pressure already. Three mana for the opponents. So the window is closing to find a Frostbite to kill the Aspirants. As Brutal Cathar is going to clean up the pit fighter. So if we can draw frostbite right now we can maybe still win this. Otherwise it's gonna be an uphill battle. A reckless impulse. Yeah I guess we'll have to give that a shot. See if we can find some burn spells. Play with fire can deal with the brutal cathar at least. Now I guess I don't have to kill the Brutal Cathar now. Could also attack with the Guide Beasts and then kill the Brutal Cathar next turn, but then there's a chance it would put a counter on it with Aspirant. So probably have to kill Brutal Cathar now. Suppose I could have waited until they decided where to put the counter with Aspirants. So could have been a little bit more patient. Now I have to deal with an adversary as well. And some very large white creatures. So it doesn't look like a race we're winning. So yeah, we have to go digging pretty much. And see what we can find. Another Hellhound's not gonna do it here. Guide Beast could pick up my land again to play another 1-drop, but not in time to enable landfall for me. And at 5 life, blocking my way out of this situation is going to be tough, especially with a Haven that can also attack. Now, of course, I could have used Hall Monitor to prevent Adversary from blocking, but we were nowhere close to dealing a lethal damage. Maybe could have also tried to use the Pit Fighter to draw instead. Maybe that was still my best bet. So, yeah, kind of a tough spot. Don't even know if I can afford to attack with a Wolf Rider, but I'll send the Guide Beast, I suppose. 
opponent actually trades, surprisingly. So their hand must be pretty stacked. Right, just a haven attacking. So we have to chum block faceless haven, and then I could like triple block the aspirant to take it out and only lose two creatures. Sure. Still doesn't leave us in a good position, but probably the best I can do right now. Do they have another two drop Athalia? Yeah, that's gonna make it impossible to cast Chandra. So, I guess triple one drop it is. So yeah, things didn't really come out smoothly. Just missed more burn spells really to answer the opponent's creatures if we can deal with an Aspirin before it starts putting too many counters on their team. We can sort of limit how much damage they can do. And then maybe get a Chandra in play and protect her. But so it goes. Sometimes you're on the draw against a good curve from the white deck and then not even Chandra can bail you out. So kind of extending my suffering here a little bit. And one life. And another Hellhound, which has been lacking the lands to go with it, since the Guide Beast was unable to keep up the pressure. Alright. Should be that to Haven getting animated here. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand. Don't have the best one-drop creature to start out, given that we have a Chandra that we want to play. So wouldn't be able to attack with a beast. But at least we've got a bit of removal to protect our Planeswalker. Impulse to help me hit my third land drop. So let's see what we're up against. Swamp into Eye Twitch. A Black Sacrifice deck is not an amazing matchup for us since they tend to have lots of early blockers. Cards like Shambling Gast are pretty annoying to get past. But we do have a Chandra at least, so I think for now it's just going to be Impulse. And we'll be able to play Chandra from Exile. And then play another one drop after. Alright, looks like a Black Green Sacrifice deck. So I get to play Chandra. I had a mana. Play Hellhounds. And then we'll send in the Guide Beast, I think. I'm okay trading for both their one drops, am I? Uh, maybe I'm not. Since we do have the removal to potentially prevent that, and then Guide Beast is pretty useful with Hellhound. Although there's a good chance they would not have accepted the trade anyway. Alright, Skullport Merchants using the treasure, implying that they don't have a land in hand. So that Eyetwitch wants to find environmental sciences, which is why it's not attacking Chandra but staying back to Chumblock. Okay, so what's next for us? Don't have a way to give Hellhound a landfall right now. Could use Hull Monitor to prevent something from blocking as well. Like maybe even the Eye Twitch. If I use Chandra for mana, monitor, activate, and they block with Merchant, I can still finish it off. If they double block, is that good for me? It's not great, but I guess with Frostbite I could kill both. It's a bit of a weird play, but I guess I'll try it. This is all to prevent them from getting to uh, 
search up environmental sciences, basically. Opponent does go for the double block. So Frostbite means we kill both creatures here. All right, and then the backup guy beast can still enable Hellhound. Opponent did find a land and another innkeeper, so they've got five mana for next turn potentially. And are we interested in cards or mana? I guess cards is fine. Find an anger. All follow our hearts. So could play guide beast, pump the guide beasts. Opponent might be holding a deadly dispute, although it could technically be a different removal spell as well. So there's a bit of risk involved in targeting my beast, but if they want to use their two treasures here, be my guest. All right. And then this lets me attack with Hellhound as well. Does a Hull Monitor want to get involved? Yeah, sure. At this point, I'm okay with the Eye Twitch dies. And it's going to chump. Probably going to see a Deadly Dispute. All right, we do not. So I'm a little bit concerned about a potential Meat Hook Massacre wiping the board, which is a reason not to play Wolf Rider, but then they might have chum blocked with Innkeeper. So it's hard to tell. Chandra's at six loyalty, so not too far from an ultimate. So I guess if they want to spend their turn on a Meat Hook Massacre, that might be okay. It's just going to be environmental sciences for now. Of course, they could have Binding the Old Gods as an answer to Chandra. For now, a Shambling Ghast. Do I want to kill Innkeeper in response? I think I do. And an eye twitch. All right, the eye twitch can keep up the pressure on Chandra. So let's dig for cards. Finding frostbite, so that answers eye twitch. And then, yeah, I guess we'll kill it now. Opponent could still get the five mana exile of permanent if they have that. We'll see. It's going to be a pest summoning, that's fine. And then trigger landfall. Do want to keep something back to block shambling ghasts. So how about I pump hellhound? And then just attack with the guide beast and hellhound, leaving the wolf rider and the hall monitor back. If they chump, that's fine by me. Could see them finish off one of my creatures, or maybe they want the treasure. So they've got a lot of mana. We'll see if they have an answer for Chandra. Eight mana total. And there's the Meat Hook Massacre we were kind of expecting. Still quite effective here. Gotta dodge a binding. Alright, Skullport Merchant, that's fine. So do I get to ultimate? Looks like it. And then I can finish off the Skullport Merchant here. I 
Of course, the Chandra Emblem not at its best in our deck, given how many one drops we have. But uh, still gonna provide some inevitability. Got a nice full graveyard for the Wolf Rider to start making more tokens. And a backup Chandra. So I'm liking my spot. So maybe start with Chandra. Is it finally time for Deadly Disputes? It is. And then I guess we'll go for cards. Another Chandra I guess we won't be casting. And then I'm thinking I hold the Wolf Rider in case I have another Sweeper. I'm gonna need that to add more stuff to the board. Right, skeletal Swarming, pretty powerful here. Although we should be able to keep the Skeletons in check. So Chandra finds cards. Impulse can go upstairs since we'll be able to cast another one drop to deal with the skeleton. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. So finally pulled off a Chandra emblem. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand's not particularly exciting, but it's still functional. So I'll try it. And then we're hoping to draw Impulse or Chandra to dig a little bit deeper. Alright, up against what looks like Mono Red Goblins. I'll keep up a Frostbite here to maybe kill their 2-drop. Since we wouldn't be able to block the Javelin here profitably, dealing 1 damage to a creature blocking it. And then I want to keep the second Frostbite to deal with their Lord at 3 mana once we get a third land in play. So we'll see if they have a 2-drop here. And there's a captain, find targets. So, can double one drop. Probably want to hang on to the guide beast in case I need a third snow land in play. Whoops, I meant to play the hull monitor there instead of the guide beast, but I guess we'll uh, live with it. Opponent's got their own Reckless Impulse, and there we see the Bandit Lord, which we're saving the Frostbite for. Javelinier attacks. Could trade it off for the Guide Beast at this point. Sure. Right, Hellhound makes me regret that a little bit. So we can attack for two. So ready to kill the Bandit Lord. And Impulse is great. Finds another Impulse, although I'm kind of liking Wolf Rider first. And then the Wolf Rider can make tokens as well if we decide to stop attacking with it. Thundering Rebuke kills Hellhound, fair enough. Ooh, and a Chandra. So I could play Chandra, make mana, still cast Impulse. Small chance Chandra would die on the way back if they can pump their captain or if they have another burn spell. So I could just Impulse and see what we get. Maybe find removal for the captain. Yeah, maybe that's a little safer. Alright, found another Chandra and I guess we'll cast the Ancestral Anger. And a Frostbite, perfect, so we've got it all here. 
Now do I want to kill the captain? I guess I'm okay trading a hull monitor for it. Could even keep the hull monitor back, but... Yeah, it's mostly in case I have another bandit lord I might want to kill instead. Opponent takes it. They could also have the 3-3 haste we might want to kill instead. And then we'll have a backup Chandra, which will maybe soak up a bit of damage while it provides extra mana or card advantage. So definitely showing the importance of these cheap burn spells. Good lucky to draw triple frostbite. And yeah, there's the hulking bugbear, which we probably want to frostbite here. Could have also let them attack first, but I don't think it changes too much. Alright, Captain still gets in for three. And a play with fire, another awesome top deck. So at this point, I'm probably fine just dealing damage to their face and finishing off the captain. As opposed to using a second plus one. There is, I guess, the chance of hitting another one mana burn spell. But this way we get to deal one extra damage. Alright, they do have another bandit lord, but it might be too little too late. As we even have another Chandra here. So that's four. That's going through. Go ahead, and a Guide Beast should be able to finish the job. Exact sees if they block the Guide Beast. So Monored Chandra beating Monored Goblins. And this is not a matchup where Chandra is very likely to stick around for long. So good lucky to find those burn spells. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Opening on Pit Fighter into probably Pit Fighter plus Monitor turn two. And then we can wait on the Guide Beasts for an extra turn maybe. Especially if we draw a Chandra or an Impulse along the way, I might want the extra lands in play. So hopefully our one drops can stick around for a while. And we won't be facing too many cheap board wipes. Right, looks like mono whites. So the familiar could already trade for the pit fighter. Yeah, I think we need to keep play with fire for higher value targets. So hull monitor attack and we'll see if they want to trade. They do. And then I can still afford to play Pit Fighter if they play Luminarch Aspirants. It's still only going to be two toughness. Ooh, nice Chandra. So we can Chandra into play with fire. So we had pretty much the ideal start. And we were on the play, so let's see if we can finally beat Mono Whites. Don't have much left in hand, but unless they've got a Skyclave Apparition, they won't have an easy time killing Chandra here. Well, speak of the devil. Most White decks have moved on to Brutal Cathar, but sadly for us, opponent still has the Skyclave. So now I might want to Hull Monitor the Skyclave so I can hit them for four. Could also think about sacrificing the pit fighter, but I kind of need it for pressure right now. So I think it's gonna be guide beasts, prevent them from blocking, hit for four. Elite Spellbinder sees basic mountain. So we've got our opponent at 11, but don't have much left to work with. Wolf Rider's not bad. So now what? Can prevent 
Apparition from blocking once again. Attack with Pit Fighter and Guide Beasts. Or I could do the reverse, prevent Spellbinder from blocking, since at least if Apparition trades I'll get a 3-3 token, which unless they've got a Brutal Cathar will be quite valuable. Yeah, I guess I can buy that. And then by encouraging the trade we also maybe enable the Wolf Rider that they don't know about yet. So we'll attack. Opponent accepts the trade. And now we can make a 3-2 token with a Wolf Rider at least. So important turn for the opponents. Another Skyclave can deal with a Wolf Rider. And a Sun Gold Sentinel also would have been able to exile cards from my graveyard to kind of nerf it. Alright, and that can trade for the 3-3 token, unless we draw a play with fire. So now what? Now all of a sudden I want to kill the Sentinel, I think. And then prevent Spellbinder from blocking so the 3-3 can attack unopposed. And then if they want to trade for Guide Beasts, I guess that's okay. So seeing the utility of Hall Monitor here, trying to squeeze in the last points of damage. Still anyone's game. Would love to find an Impulse for card advantage, more burn spells. Opponent accepts the trade. Another Kassig Wolf Rider would also be okay. And then close call here whether or not to play the land in case we find Akum Hellhounds could be better to hold it. Now our opponent does have a Cave of the Frost Dragon to potentially block with, but we can Frostbite the Elite Spellbinder and then keep the Hall Monitor back to use the ability on the cave if they animate it and then hit them for 4. I'll go full control just in case. Opponent's down to two. Alright, and we did it. So, very close game here against Mono White. Hall Monitor putting in some good work. Alright, so we got a nice sample size here with our Monorets Chandra deck, and overall I'm quite pleased with how the deck turned out, especially when we get to play turn 3 Chandra and play another 1-drop in the same turn. It's quite satisfying, and especially when we're on the play, we can apply a lot of pressure very early and make it difficult for a lot of decks to recover. And then even if they do eventually cast a Sweeper, we'll still have our Planeswalker to take over, like we saw against the Black-Green Sacrifice deck. So is this going to turn into some sort of meta-defining deck? Unlikely, since at the end of the day the overall card quality of the deck is still quite a bit lower than, let's say, a mono-white aggro deck, where almost every card is an all-star. So if we don't draw our Chandra or Impulse into our Chandra, our deck can feel a little bit underpowered, especially when still facing the same sweepers that Mono White has to deal with. And then, of course, we lack a creature land like Faceless Haven. So we do rely pretty heavily on drawing Chandra under those circumstances. And if we do, the deck is certainly quite decent, but we'll maybe have to wait for another payoff for this Mono Red deck to really take off. But this is still the best home I've found for Chandra, as opposed to trying to ramp into a 5-drop on turn 4 using the mana ability, which uh, typically doesn't pan out if the opponent has any sort of board presence to pressure your Planeswalker. So much better to ask questions with all your early 1-drops and then have a leftover Planeswalker they have to deal with, as opposed to playing the Planeswalker and then hoping it sticks around. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.